Right, in the next few videos, we're going to be sketching some more cubics, but this time they're going to be written as a product of three linear terms, okay? Or um, you could possibly get a linear term and a quadratic term, okay? But that will be one of the more tricky ones to have a look at, but we will be touching upon that later, okay? So in this case, we've got a product of three linear terms. Each one of these is linear, okay? We multiply them all together so it's a product of linear terms. And from that, if you then think, okay, well, what does that mean? When will we get something that crosses the x-axis? So when would this cross the x-axis? It's intersecting with y equals zero. When is this zero? Okay, that's what we've got to ask ourselves. Now, this whole thing is going to be zero at three specific points. It could be zero when x is two, because if that bracket's zero, the whole thing's zero. If this bracket is zero, then x would have to be minus one, so the whole thing would be zero. And if this bracket was zero, then the whole thing would be zero, so that'd be at x is minus five. So we now have three values on the x-axis, minus 1, minus 5, and 2. So let's say, uh, I don't to do, let's have 2 there. We're going to have minus 1, and we're going to have minus 5. So 2, 3, 4, 5. Five. Let's have minus 5 there. Okay? So, we know that the curve must cross these three points. Okay? So, it's different to when we were looking at y equals x cubed. Because y equals x cubed looked like that. Now, that's not crossing the x-axis at three points. It's only crossing it at one. So it's going, there are cubic equations that look different to y equals x cubed. Okay? So this one is completely factorised. So we know it crosses at minus five, minus one, and two. Now, where does it cross the y-axis? Well, if you remember back to the previous video where I wor easily worked out where uh, a translation of x cubed crossed the y-axis, it's the same here. We can tell by doing minus 2 times 1 times 5. Because that would give us the constant term when we multiplied out the brackets. So minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Times 5 is minus 10. So it crosses the y-axis at minus 10. So we can now say that the curve must do something like come down and um, go through minus 10 the y-axis and come up for 2. And it would keep increasing. So at some point it must also come back on itself to go to the minus 5 and then go down again. So it has this peculiar shape. Um, so, a positive cubic like this, with three linear terms, so if the number in front of the x cubed is positive, which this would be, because you've got three positive terms of x, would look like this shape. But if it's negative, instead, looks like this. So, there's a positive and a negative. Positive starting from the bottom left and through the three points, and if it was negative, would be started at the top left and through the three points. Okay, and that's to do with the number in front of the x cubed. So effectively, what you for a cubic equation, y equals a x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, okay, if you expanded out the whole thing, then this is when a is positive, and this is when a 
is negative. Okay, that number in front of the x cubed. So we're going to go through a few more examples of this um, to get our heads completely around how you sketch these cubics when they're written as three linear terms.